emotional addiction can be helped through the use of the traditional 12-step program. Made famous by Alcoholics Anonymous, the 12-step program is a tried and true method for regaining our balance of consciousness and therefore our inner peace and harmony which can be simply adapted to any addiction. If we use the essence of the 12 steps, as many do, to live by, we can lessen the impact the parameters of our emotional addictions have on our consciousness. We will be able to think more freely, perceive more clearly, and enjoy emotional energies we share with others more fully. Let's look at how the traditional 12 steps might be adapted for use with an emotional addiction. For example, the attitude of false pride. We must first admit that we have a problem whereby our consciousness is often underpined with attitudes that falsely suggest we are in some way more powerful and more worthy than others. During this step, it is often useful to observe ourselves while positioned in someone else's shoes. We can all justify why we are worthy in our own personal inner world, but is this opinion true from the perspective of others. Step 2. Arrive at the belief that a power greater than ourself has the ability to support our healing and restore our clarity of consciousness. Especially during emotional addiction, this can sometimes seem difficult. The trick is to just accept it for now. If absolute proof finds it to be wrong, will adjust our belief in the future. No one has found solid proof that this is wrong yet, and we as human beings have been checking for thousands of years. Step 3. Make the conscious decision to turn our will over to the care of God as we understand Him. This is important because at the final levels of consciousness, we are all connected and so influence over our consciousness and will is entirely possible. Refining our life energy to include energy of such levels, synchronization, has always supported natural healing on every level. Step 4. Create a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourself. We can easily harm others often with the thoughts and attitudes we project towards them because the life energy dynamics of communication naturally impact the nervous system. Including the moral inventory, times when our own gossip, for example, has impacted another's feelings. Even if they are able to overcome our projections and appear outwardly unaffected, they still had to endure the chemical reactions in their nervous system to some extent. This incident needs to be included in the inventory. Step 5. Admit to God, ourselves, and to one other person the nature of our wrongs. This can be difficult because often we allow ourselves to avoid accepting the blame. Blame is a socially constructed notion rather than a naturally occurring emotion. Allow yourself to accept the blame and notice that it does not by itself initiate any uncomfortable chemical reactions when we do not attach it to any of our natural emotions. Step 6. Become entirely ready to have God remove all of the defects of character caused by our emotional addiction. Understand that the reality of the world has shown us that God really works like a magician. The healing from him won't be instant, it will take time. Be aware also that every time we use our emotion to judge the process or become impatient with the process, we risk initiating another emotional addiction. Step 7. Humbly ask him to remove our emotional addiction. Humility is a key because this attitude is one of only a few 
will synchronize our flow of life energy automatically and allow us to sense and perceive every layer of natural energy clearly, including the subatomic layer, which is the home of God and the spiritual realm. Step 8. Make a list of all the persons we have harmed with our emotional addiction and become willing to make amends to them all. In most cases of emotional addiction, the amends most often takes the form of a sincere apology and promise not to hurt the person's feelings again. Step 9. Make direct amends to all of the people we have harmed with our emotional addiction to false pride wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Step 10. Continue to take personal inventory and when we are wrong, promptly admit it. Continuous personal inventory is something we only need to do with our own personal inner self-management. Don't be afraid to, in your own mind, talk to yourself about the nature of the thoughts you are currently choosing to think. Most of us naturally use our conscience to assist this process. Step 11. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand Him. Praying only for a knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. Step 12. A spiritual awakening is the result of these steps. We then move on from our emotional addiction to practice these principles in all our affairs. Many spiritual leaders have also offered helpful advice about overcoming our emotional addictions. Dr. Joshua David Stone's article, The 15 Major Tests of the Spiritual Path, describes the major emotional addictions that we all need to heal and teach our own thinking to transcend if we are to find true enlightenment as tests. The 15 major tests are Power Fame Money Sexuality Desire Attachment Transcending Fear Selfishness False Pride Anger Greed Jealousy Vanity Transcending Duality and Egotism Emotional addiction is a problem for all of us. Manipulation of emotional addiction has been used across time to influence individual people and even control entire populations. When used responsibly, however, emotion can become our greatest human gift. It is the responsibility of each of us to maintain our own inner self-management practices in an effort to ensure that such simple chemical addictions of emotion don't take over our nervous system and limit our own regular creation of consciousness that is our own thinking and indeed limit our life.